But first, we can go to Westminster and speak to Jeremy Hunt, who is the chair of the House of Commons Health Select Committee, the UK's longest-serving health secretary. Uh, thank you very much for being uh, on the programme today. This morning, is the biggest challenge our generation, our generation has faced. It feels as if it's the biggest health crisis since the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. And yet it was only in the last few days that the government's closed schools, restaurants, bars and cafes. Have we been a bit slow off the mark? Well, because of um, the contact tracing that's been done by Public Health England, which I think has probably been the best in Europe, the virus has been a few weeks behind the other major European countries. And that has given us time to get things organised and time to learn about the best measures to do. The crucial thing now is that if everyone does what these social distancing measures require, if we do what the Prime Minister says, if we don't visit our, our mother for Mother's Day, all those kinds of things, then we have a chance of avoiding the, the terrible impact on the health system that we saw in Italy. So I think it's all to play for. I think it is absolutely possible still just to avoid what we've seen, but everyone is very, very worried and the, 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 the virus is growing still very fast and it is very, very disappointing when people don't obey the simple instructions that are being given out because it, it's not your own life you're risking necessarily, but you could be risking someone else's life. It's interesting hearing the words you're using there, just, we have a chance. How troubling do you find the situation that we're currently in? It is deeply worrying and you know, I spent my time when I was health secretary before being incredibly impressed by the work of people on the front line. But I think now when people see that uh, doctors in other countries have lost their lives on the front line against coronavirus and they see the personal risks that our NHS staff are taking now, particularly in London, where it is very, very pressured at the moment. I think we need to reflect that we actually owe it to them that we do everything we can to slow the spread of the virus because they are putting their necks out for us. And uh, we just have that basic responsibility to, to those NHS frontline staff who are doing so much to do our bit and slow the spread of the virus. I mean, this week, Northwick Park Hospital in Harrow in the North London area declared a critical incident after running out of intensive care beds. I mean, we're only at the beginning, it feels, of the battle against coronavirus, and yet hospitals are already struggling. Is the NHS ready? Well, in terms of uh, pandemic preparedness, the NHS was globally recognised as the second best prepared system in the world by an independent American think tank. So I think it is a pretty well prepared system. But the truth is that, you know, Italy was a well funded, is a well funded healthcare system. It's a well respected healthcare system. And we've seen the impact there that a pandemic can have. So no healthcare system can really sustain the kind of pressure that we're seeing when this virus gets out of control. So that's why what happens in the next week is going to be absolutely critical. Speaking to Jeremy Corbyn earlier, he seemed to be suggesting that the NHS is not prepared. Uh, you know, we started off with 5,000 ventilators, around 4,000 intensive care beds. You were health secretary, of course, from 2012 until 2018, the longest serving ever. Do you take some responsibility for the state of the NHS at this minute as we're about to face a global pandemic? Of course. And when I was health secretary, I was someone who believed that we did need a big increase in resources for the NHS, which is why I fought very hard for that £20 billion increase, that big increase. So I do think the NHS needs more resources, but I think we also have to recognise this is a different debate. This is a debate about uh, how you cope with a pandemic that can blow over any healthcare system anywhere in the world. And the only way that we can stop that happening is to suppress the spread of the virus. And that means each and every one of us recognising that if we get the virus today, because of the incubation period, uh, we might end up in hospital in two weeks' time. So what we do today massively matters. And if we want to have any chance at all of, of, uh, of stopping the NHS falling over, then we have to obey to the letter all the advice that's going out about uh, keeping apart from each other, particularly keeping apart from 
elderly relatives and people who are at risk, um, taking all those measures that are completely unprecedented but will help to save our lives and those of our loved ones. I mean, we're all having to get our heads around the massive changes we're going to have to make to our lives, whether you've got a young child, whether you've got a teenager who is not going to be able to sit their exams, if you can't see your elderly mum today on Mother's Day. Um, you've got a young family. What kind of changes are you having to make? Well, it's my uh, daughter's eighth birthday today. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously she's not having a birthday party and there'll be many children like that up and down the country who are experiencing big disappointment about things they were hoping to do that they're not able to do. But I think everyone understands that in a situation like this, actually as, as Jeremy Corbyn was, was saying just now, uh, there is a sense of community spirit, a sense of everyone pulling together. And we absolutely can get through this. Uh, as a country, we've, we've been through huge challenges in our history. Um, but uh, we also have to recognise that it's in our hands whether we're successful or not. And the extent to which we comply with all the advice that we're being given is going to be absolutely critical. A really happy birthday to your daughter. If you want to wish her a happy birthday, then do feel free as well. Um, OK, I'll do that <laughs> now. Happy birthday, Anna. <laughs> um, we heard from, um, we've been talking a lot about the NHS staff and how they really are on the front line of the crisis. And um, there's been reports of them not having the protective equipment that they need. Uh, many uh, doctors writing into the Sunday Times today uh, saying that they feel abandoned. The chair of the British Medical Association was on the show last weekend saying that there's not enough testing of NHS staff. Is this something that you're worried about? Well, I think a lot has changed in the last week and we have had lorries on the road pretty much every day going around the country. Uh, we had a very uh, difficult select committee hearing on Tuesday in which we uh, raised these issues with Sir Simon Stevens. And the NHS really has moved heaven and earth to get protective equipment out to every hospital. The concerns that are being raised are that uh, for treating coronavirus patients, the advice previously was to use these very high specification masks, the FFP3 masks, and the sort of the full gowns, hazmat suits, and that has changed uh, to only using that very high grade equipment when you're um, putting on ventilators and so on. So I think the solution to that, if it's possible, is to order more of that high grade equipment, more of those gowns, more of the FFP3 masks. Uh, and to order those as quickly as possible because those are clearly uh, the highest grade equipment and those are the things that the medics would feel most comfortable wearing and would obviously all like to give them that degree of comfort. But I do think we need to recognise that a lot has improved in the last few days. Um, we haven't got much time left, but I do want to get a quick question in about the economic package announced by the government this week. Um, lots of help there for many people across the country, of course. Uh, but there has been some focus on the self-employed uh, who would be eligible for just £94 a week uh, if they are unable to work. Is that enough? Well, clearly £94 a week is not enough for most people to be able to survive on. But in reality... Uh, this is the most comprehensive economic package that has been announced anywhere in the Western world. And it's a huge step for the government to do that. And it's a vote of confidence that when we get to the other side, when we put the virus behind us, whenever we're able to do that, we will be able to get back to normal life. And the quickest way to do that is to avoid having one, two, three million people losing their jobs in the next few months. Uh, because that would create a, a much longer term dent in confidence. So I think it's, a, it's an unprecedented and very, very important package. And I'm sure the chance will be looking at self-employed as well and doing what we can to support them going forward.